Well, let's get more on this. David Tate is a mountaineer who's climbed Everest five times for the NSPCC. David, thank you very much for coming in. Pleasure. You've been to this base camp. Exactly to this point, yes. Um, the avalanche, I believe, has occurred at a place called the Popcorn Field, which is roughly two-thirds through the Kumbu Icefall, a vast waterfall, for want of a better expression, mm -hmm. perhaps a kilometre wide, maybe two kilometres long. The problem with this point on, in the icefall is the fact it's overhung by some giant, enormous seracs, almost beyond description in their size. And I think um, the weather and the fact that these things uh, are just so unstable, gravity has basically taken over and swept these poor guys what, away. What was the weather like? Well, I, th I think it's been relatively clement, and over the last few years, been increasingly clement. Okay. And um, this point in the ice wall is notorious. People, even at that altitude, try and run through this particular spot. Uh, it's comical in a sense because you can't run, but uh, the degree of nervousness you feel when you enter the popcorn is um, is, r is notable. These are some of your photos from. Uh, was this your last trip? This is last trip. This shows. Uh, this shows. Um, the ice fall in its entirety, running up between Nupsi on the right, and this is myself having just emerged from an avalanche in exactly the same spot this time last year. Gosh, I, you, you know the dangers when you I, go there. I know the dangers, yes, mm. I think everybody who does. I think the point is that these, the people who seem to be collected by this tragedy are Sherpas who mm. work for a living. They're not people who are going there for charitable reasons or glory reasons or ego reasons. These guys have, uh, carry enormously heavy loads from base camp up to the, the camps which are higher up on the mountain, and they, they work endlessly. Uh, it's, it doesn't surprise me that this has happened. I'm so surprised that it hasn't happened earlier yeah, with so I many mean, people. The, the thing is, you say it's their job, and, the, and that's why they do it rather than for charity or glory, but it also does mean that they do it a lot, that they know these routes very well, but mm. an avalanche can strike any time, anywhere. It's the most dangerous spot on Everest. It's ironic, it's almost the lowest point. Many Sherpas loathe going through the icefall. Do they? And it's a few of the commercial operators the year before last declined to continue um, their expeditions because of the dangers both in the icefall and on the face that followed it called the uh, Lobiche face. Now to me it's, it's, this accident has been waiting to happen. We've been very lucky to this point um, that it collected nine perhaps more people this time is really not a surprise. Yeah, the latest reports David suggesting 12 Nepalese guides have died. What is the procedure? I'm sure you've, you've run through it all those times that you've been up there uh, about getting the rest of the people off the mountain and, and to hospital mm. and, and trying to recover bodies. The difficulty is the inherent dangers of the icefall. It, as I said it's a waterfall that's constantly moving. It moves meters a day. The size of the blocks of these, the size of these ice blocks mm. are house size. And so the, the nervousness that people will have to re-enter the icefall during the day in particular when the sun is on it will be, will be critical. Mm -hmm. They will have to, luckily now helicopters can actually get to camp one and camp two, so they'll be able to lift out um, the injured but the, the dead bodies will take their time coming down the mountain. And uh, we, we know Everest can be a busy place these days. There's so many people mm. wanting to, to achieve that uh, amazing goal. Will, will they put a suspension on, on other people climbing the mountain? I doubt it. I no. doubt it. Um, the, the, the type of people who have been caught here are Sherpas who are carrying loads up to Camp 1, Camp 2. Also a group of Sherpas called the Icefall Doctors who position ladders in between many, many, many crevasses. These crevasses move overnight. They're in there all the time. They have the, the, probably the most dangerous job on Earth. Um, will it stop the climbing? No, it'll, temp it'll be a temporary pause. I think it'll give a few Westerners at base camp pause, mm. and you may see some departures as a consequence. But I think the Sherpa, the Sherpa community needs the money. Uh, they need the jobs, and uh, to be honest, this is, um, everybody there knows that where this has happened was waiting to happen. And it's a dangerous, dangerous place to be, Mount Everest. Yes, it was. Mm. This time last year, in exactly the same spot, I was with a group of three or four guys and a huge chunk of ice broke off to my left, above my head. I tried to move two or three metres and look back and it was almost upon me. I dived to the ground, put my head behind a lump of ice and really screamed out loud put my hands over my face as the avalanche swept over me. Uh, it was truly the most horrific thing that's ever happened to me, in the dark with your hands over your mouth, waiting for a compression of snow that would tell you you weren't going home. But luckily that didn't come. And I reached out in front of me when it all went silent and I could still feel the ground. Pressed, stood up out of the snow luckily. And that's when that peculiar picture was shot 
of me looking like Indiana Jones, but actually, frankly, terrified beyond belief. Wow, an incredible story. I'm very lucky. Very lucky. Do you want to go back? Perhaps not to Everest. I'd like to try and do K2, so I'm a okay. sucker for punishment. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for coming in to talk to us today. Very interesting to hear your uh, experiences of the mountain. Thank you. Pleasure.